So my name is Janae Norris. I'm a senior associate director here in the admissions office at Binghamton University. Brought to you live today from my house um, because of the COVID virus. I'm thrilled to welcome all of you and I want to congratulate all of you on your acceptance. And I'm not the only one that wants to offer that acceptance and that congratulations up. All of my panelists that are here are really thrilled to be here. We were just talking about how excited and um, that they are thrilled that you were accepted and it is um, one of our strongest and best classes that we've admitted. So we're really thrilled. Um, and I do have a, a message that from Upinder, who I want to share with all of you because he um, is actually teaching class right now. So um, I said, you know, it's more important for you to be in with your class. Um, but Congratulations and welcome to Binghamton. I'm Upinder Dillon, the Dean of the School of Management, or SOM as we call it here. Given these unusual circumstances, I'm sorry that we couldn't do this face to face, but I'm delighted to be able to speak to you today. As one of the top ranked public business schools in the nation, we truly believe that your success is our success. Our classes are taught by world class researchers and industry experts and our alumni have become business leaders across the globe. You will have countless opportunities that will prepare you to become a key decision maker in this ever-changing economy. And we hope you take advantage of all of them. Our Career Services Office is here to help you prepare for internships and jobs. And we have dozens of student organizations for you to be involved in. SOM is invested in your future. Congratulations on this achievement, and I look forward to welcoming you on campus in the fall. For all of us, I wanted to just introduce our panelists here today. Um, Molly Pinelli is a School of Management Academic Advisor. She's going to, she should have access to be able to add in her PowerPoint um, and share the screen. And then we also have some other great folks that are here answering questions. So Katie Collette, who is also a School of Management Advisor, is here today and is excited to meet with all of you. We have Joe Diabruzzo, who I know I just crushed his last name. <laughs> Joe. That's a good way, Debracci. Debracci, sorry. Um, from our School of Management Career Services. We have Dan Black, who is an alum, and he is the ENY Global Partner Manager. Um, which is in charge of all of the human resources for ENY. We have Byron Gittens, who is also a school admissions counselor. Um, we have Pat Robel joining us, who is also an international admissions counselor. And then we have an amazing group of students who I'm going to let introduce themselves, if they don't mind, and just talking about um, if you can say what city you're from and what major you are this year. So if Jaden, if you want to start. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Jaden. I am a senior from Long Island studying accounting with a concentration in management information systems. Hey, guys, I'm Amanda. I'm a sophomore um, and I'm from Jericho, Long Island, and I'm studying accounting and finance with a minor in theater. Hi guys, my name is Michaela. I'm a senior here at Binghamton. I am from Cortland Manor, New York, which is in Westchester, and I'm studying business administration with concentrations in finance and management information systems. Uh, hey guys, I'm a sophomore from Albany, New York, and currently I'm a business administration major with finance and MIS concentrations. What I want to just tell you a little bit, about, I am a school of management graduate. I graduated um, in some time ago in business administration. And I know that so many of you are so excited. We wish you could come and visit the campus. At least through the video, you were able to see some of the highlights of what Binghamton University has to offer. And um, just in terms of um, offering you some different opportunities here to learn today about what we have to offer, I think you're gonna find that there's a great deal. Um, and we actually have so much to offer you and I know that Katie and Molly are excited to share a little bit about the different programs and I'm going to let the, turn it over to them now to talk a little bit about the academic programs. Hi, welcome everybody again. Um, as Janae said, I'm an academic advisor in School of Management. Um, roll with the punches here as I try to advance my slide. <laughs> Just to talk a little bit about quick facts about the School of Management that we're number 18 best colleges for business majors in the U.S number 24 for best bachelor's in accounting programs, um, number seven for best actual colleges in the U.S., and number seven for best value. 
Um, just to kind of give you a little overview, there's about 1,600 undergraduate school students in the School of Management. Um, about 280 of those are freshmen, and the rest we kind of take in through transfers, whether um, uh, from external transfers from other schools or internal transfers from within um, Binghamton University. Um, so it may feel like a mid-sized university, but when you're here, it kind of feels a little smaller. Um, I think as students would probably attest to that um, because the classes uh, are pretty, pretty cozy, um, especially once you get into the junior and senior year. S1 programs. So we have two programs within school of management. We have accounting and business administration. And so within the business administration, if you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to be a marketing student or I'm going to be a finance student, those were where the concentrations play in. So you're a business administration major with a concentration in entrepreneurship or a concentration in finance. So we offer a lot of different concentrations. Um, I know a couple of people have already talked about what they're, what they're concentrating in, and you probably heard a couple of people talk about their multiple concentrations. So um, especially if you come in with a lot of earned uh, credit from high school or something like that, it's, it, a lot of people end up doing at least two concentrations if they have enough earned credit coming in. I know a lot of people do. Um, so a concentration is four classes um, in a certain area. So it's easy to kind of combine those concentrations. So um, you know what? Hopefully you have a lot of varied interests. <laughs> it's hopefully it's not all business. We're business school. We focus in business. But I know, Jaden, if you wanted to talk a little bit about like why you chose, you have a lot of different interests, I know, so. Yeah, so for me, in terms of how I pick Binghamton or my major or? Just what you do at Binghamton. I know that it's not all business for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm all over the place. Uh, Binghamton is really what you want to make it if I had to sum it up in one phrase, very individualized. So obviously I'm an accounting major. I do a whole bunch within the School of Management um, with the Accounting Association and I've done a whole bunch of case competitions that you know I can't even count, lots of teamwork and leadership. But also outside of that, um, I'm a Zumba instructor here on campus, a tour guide with Michaela. I'm also a part of the Himmin Production Company, which is a student run theater company here. So if you love accounting or business administration and you love SOM and you want to have your whole life dedicated to that, you can 100% do that. There's plenty going on in the School of Management, but also just even from the two or three activities that I've described to you guys, I think you can tell that you can have a life in the Binghamton community as a whole too. It's really what you want to make of it. Right. So like I was saying, if you have a lot of earned credit, there's also minors that are available in the liberal arts school through the Harper School. So I definitely have lots of students who minor in things that you wouldn't even think related to business, whether it be, um, you know, theater or history. They just have these, these varied interests. I have people who are double majoring, and to double major, you need 156 total credit hours. Um, so I have students who are double majoring, majoring in something within Harper, doing, doing history or doing math or doing something else that they, they enjoy along with the business degree. So there's a lot of, of room for varying your degree. And if you have a lot of varied interests to continue to look at your passions and follow those passions. So studying abroad, there's, this is another excellent um, opportunity for SUNY students because maybe not this semester, <laughs> um, but in the future, um, we, have, um, we have over a thousand different SUNY programs. So we have our own pro programs within Binghamton where you can study abroad through a school that we partner with, but then you can also go through, let's say Oswego has a program at a country that you want to go to, you can follow that you can go along as an Oswego student paying the student tuition to that particular country. So there's over a hundred different countries that you could go to. There's summer, there's winter, there's fall, there's spring. So if that's something you're passionate about, it's something you can pursue. I know Michaela, you you studied abroad, right? You want to talk about your experience? Sure. I did study abroad. Luckily, I just went last uh, semester, got it in before all of this craziness occurred. But I went to Madrid and like uh, Katie mentioned, I went through SUNY Oswego. So one of the main drivers between why I chose Binghamton was the access to all of the study abroad programs across the SUNY system. So I chose the SUNY Oswego program ultimately because the beauty of it is you can take all of your classes and none of the grades transfer over. So I got to fully enjoy my time in Madrid, um, take business classes while I was there 
and so keep my very high GPA <laughs> while having as much fun as possible. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So um, graduate school opportunities. So we definitely have a lot of those, whether you, you may some students decide that they want to do something else. They want to go do, uh, you know, master's in human resources, or they want to do, um, a, follow some other track. But within the School of Management, we offer MS in Accounting. And this is a one year program. So once you're done with your undergraduate in accounting, if you have a 3.0 or higher, you're guaranteed to get into the master's in accounting. It's a one year program. Um, and so that you'd have your master's after just one more year of Binghamton. Um, and a lot of students find a way, uh, especially if you have a lot of earned credit to do their undergrad in three years and then do spend their fourth year doing their master's program. So um, sometimes that's an opportunity for people. Um, fast track MBA. So we also have a one year MBA program um, where it's just um, after your fourth year at Binghamton, or you just serves go another year and get your master's in business administration. Again, you can, one of the common questions, can I condense this down into my four years where I do three years undergrad and then one year grad? And that's definitely true. Um, there's 126 credit hours needed for your undergraduate degree and a certain classes you need, but if you can kind of accelerate that and some of you already have with AP courses, um, then you can certainly do it within four years. Um, for both those programs, you don't need to let us know now. Um, you just need to apply. Um, in the lap, in your final year for those two programs. And then we also have the Fast Track Professional MBA in the city. Um, so so there's those students who decide that they want to work in the city and pursue their MBA, they could do that too, through us still. Um, so and that's a Saturday only program, um, but there's lots of different opportunities for continuing on afterwards. And I want to kind of turn it over to a couple of students to talk about their experiential learning mainly because this is something that I think Binghamton really prides themselves on is giving students the opportunity to apply what they're learning in the classroom into real world situations. And we start that even at, in freshman year where everybody is going to be doing cases in Management 111. And Management 111 is a course that all freshmen take and we're now um, encouraging transfers to take it too if they want to. Um, and that kind of gets you immersed into what it's like to uh, be a school management student. Um, so that's where you first start off with your cases, right off of the bat. And then there's, a, there's the Dean's Case Challenge, which you would do in Management 111, and then there's a J-Core Live, and everybody ends up taking the junior core classes. And so there, there's a live case done with Mazda, um, so that everybody gets their experience that way. But then in addition to that, there's a lot of other experiential learning classes. I don't know if some, some of my panelists could talk about some of the things they've been involved with. Sure. So I'll just say that uh, in terms of professionalism, I've done a whole bunch of these case competitions, like I said, and I almost always end up talking about one of them in one way or another in an interview for all of the ones that I've applied to. Uh, it's great for showing teamwork, it's great for showing leaderships, your hard skills like using PowerPoint and Excel, which uh, especially with the Dean's Case Challenge, you're kind of just thrown into it in a really open environment, which is great. So you get hands-on experience day one. They come in and they say, okay, this is what we're doing. This is how you do it. Go for it. See what happens. And then from there, you kind of uh, hone in on those skills and improve all the way up through Management 411 with, or the JCore Live case with those capstone cases later on too. I would say, um, so when I came into Binghamton, I had no idea what I wanted to do, and I did the Dean's Case Challenge, which is what every, every freshman does, um, but I also did the Silver Lane Mergers and Acquisitions Case Competition just to dip my toes into finance, so just to see, and I found that that was, for me, the jumping point into um, declaring my finance concentration, and I ended up joining the investment fund and just Involving yourself in these case competitions and seeing what you like is really, really beneficial, um, not only for your resume, but just for experiences to talk about, like Jaden said, and also just to find out what you love. So, like, I would credit um, my whole career, like, career path into finance right now just because of these um, opportunities that Binghamton provides. Perfect. Definitely. Yeah, go ahead, Gail. But no, just no. to echo what uh, both Jaden and Amanda 
mentioned, um, the experiences that you do outside the classroom are equally as important as your classes, especially within SOM. So, like Amanda mentioned, a lot of the thing, a lot of the practical skills that you're learning through the equity research case competition, through the mergers acquisition case competitions, those are skills that you actually learn through your internships that you'll do in between your summers. So I interned at Bank of America my sophomore and junior summer, and all the Excel skills that I had to learn and all the uh, market analysis that I learned, doing those case competitions helped me extremely, like, monumental amount of help during my internship. So don't discredit any of the outside activities <laughs> from your classes. Like, they're very, very important. And I, you know, and one of those things I think that we try to hammer hammer into freshmen is that to professionalism, even from the get-go, um, if you're coming in as a transfer student, we certainly um, try to work with you, especially mentors are uh, handed to students within Management 111, they get to pick who have their mentor, juniors and seniors within the School of Management. And then we also have mentors for the transfer students as well. And so your mentor can also talk about things that maybe if you have an interest, what, what you should be involved in and what you should dip your toes in. I mean, certainly I think if you're interested in any particular area, there's an area, there's a, an experiential learning course for you, whether you're interested in marketing, whether you're interested in accounting, whether you're interested in you know, technology and MIS. So there's definitely something for you to be immersed in. Um, oops. Technical difficulties there. <laughs> I am going to turn it over to Joe DeBracci to talk a little about S1 Career Services. Um, S1 students are lucky to have their own career services that works really hard to find them opportunities. Um, so Joe, you want to talk about the services you offer? Yeah, happy to do that. And thanks everyone for joining. Welcome to my living room, as someone else said. New times, but we want to make it work as good as we can for everyone. And certainly, um, if at the end of the presentation you think of a question after we've disengaged, I know there's a chart coming up that has emails on it. Uh, please, I'm sure you can reach out to any one of them. I'd be happy to take an email from anyone and get back to you, and we can connect and talk on the phone if you'd like to as well, since we have a bit of an abbreviated version today. But uh, as was just mentioned, the biggest advantage I think that you have is having a dedicated office of career professionals like myself, whose full-time jobs are to help prepare you for placement in internships and upon graduation. And we do that by offering you some of the things you see here, career advising, making sure you have a resume that meets a very specific template that we use um, that's based on feedback our employers have given us and it works quite well mock interviews all the things that you see here it might be helpful for you to know a little bit of my background prior to coming to binghamton university about two and a half years ago my entire career was spent working as an hr director i worked uh, at ibm uh, lockheed martin ascension health and uh, most recently before coming to Binghamton at my alma mater, Cornell, as an HR director. So most of my time was spent on the other side of the table, interviewing students, interviewing candidates for the positions we had. So I, can, I have the experience of having seen what works well, and I also have a number of connections that I use to help get students placed into the roles. And students listening in today, you know, if you're coming in as a freshman or any year whatsoever, if I gave you one piece of advice to, to take away with you, I think this is true no matter where you attend, engage with your career service office early on. I think if we asked a couple of our students here today, I recognize them as familiar faces. They are folks who've taken advantage of our services. They're ambitious, hardworking students and their resumes speak for themselves, but we can help put that little additional bit of polish on there. I want to talk about a few of the other things uh, you see on your screen here today. A really exciting uh, thing that we just enhanced at the university is a mentor match program. Literally just this past month of March, we've expanded a program to now having over 700 alumni who have come to us and said, we would love nothing better than to help out another student get better at whatever they need to mentor them on whatever they may want to have information on. And they're giving you an hour of their time via phone or via a meeting like this to talk about how you get into the field. What courses did you take? What do you think are the most important skills? What surprised you about? 
And we have alums in every discipline you could think of. You all are school of management folks today, but if you said, God, I'd like to meet somebody who works in the entertainment fields or in healthcare or whatever it may be, we have those alum available for you. And they are more than willing to, to help out. It's a wonderful program. And I'm gonna skip a few of these just for the essence of time. I think another fantastic program that I encourage students to take advantage of we do this in coordination with our uh, Fleischmann Center, the main career center, is sending career treks where we have people who have partnered with us, mostly alums like Dan, who host us at their facilities in New York, and, and also we do them in Boston and DC. But during the break in January, we take busloads of students, or you're on your break, you're in New York already, and bring you right into the employer so you get to see what EY looks like. You get to see what IBM looks like. You get to talk to the folks who work at Morgan Stanley and make those connections. And they're, they're, they're not just doing this out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because they want to help and they want to see the talent available. So it's a great opportunity for you to feature yourself to them. Let's go ahead and switch to our next slide. Well, here's the magic question everybody wants to know. And this is from last year's data, inclusive through, I want to say, May uh, 2019 graduates. Within six months of placement, you can see that number, 95% uh, placed and at an average starting salary of 66,000. Um, and that number of the 95% could even be higher. There's just some students we don't get responses from no matter how hard we chase them. Now this includes students who may be going on for masters or if they join the military or something like that. But the overwhelming majority are going into the workforce post-graduation we were fortunate, as I said, we have a strong alum base. Where are they going? Here are the employers that are um, hiring our folks today. And you can just see it's a long list. Some are a little harder to read. We have a person on our, our team today who is spending her full time sourcing new employers for us all the time as the employment markets change and just as employers come up and down and boy, with all that's gone on today, it seems like it's been a wise investment. She focuses her entire time on engaging with new employers, get them to recruit for us, to offer internships, to offer those site visits. So the list is constantly growing and changing. I think the, the last question I have just talks for a second about some of the student groups. And again, I apologize, that's hard to read, but another important part of your educational experience is affiliating yourself with students who want to be in the same major as you are. So, we have student run, and again, our students can talk to these here. I know some of these students are officers in some of our groups. Accounting Association, uh, Marketing Association, Finance, MIS, HR, uh, Logistics. There are a ton of them available out there, right, that are all student run. And more importantly, they work closely with our alums in the industries where these folks are hired to get them to share their expertise, to meet the students early in their career, and to learn more from the professionals in the industry. So a lot of great opportunities. I, I have to tell you, I am, I've recruited on many a college campus during my career, and I am extraordinarily proud to be affiliated with Binghamton University School of Management. I'll, I'll talk to the parents a moment. The quality of education your sons and daughters can get here are second to none. We have the great placement numbers you see, and we continue to have great rankings that were shared in the beginning because we hire great students, we have strong faculty, and we work hard to support them. So I'll end my presentation. And again, guys, anytime you have a question, you can either do it today, or if you want to send an email, engage privately, happy to help you out with that. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Janae. She's going to introduce our next speaker. Um, yep. I'm back. Continue on just real quick. Yeah, um, please. <laughs> so <laughs> just to kind of just to give you a little overview, because I think this is a big selling point for me um, as an advisor. I've worked at other schools, actually, and I think our transfer credit policy is very liberal. Um, so as far as testing is concerned, um, if you have AP, IBs, um, a levels will will allow up to 32 credits from those tests. Um, so I've been alluding to the fact that you might be coming in with credit. So from testing, we allow up to 32 credits. 
Um, but if you've taken classes at other schools, so if you've taken a class through Farmingdale or Syracuse, we'll take that in addition to those 32 credits. So um, it's, it's very easy to come in and it's um, with, a, with already a year's worth of work done for a lot of students. Um, if that's not you, that's fine. You know, we still, <laughs> still offer classes here. Um, so just, just know that we're just very liberal when it comes to that. I know a lot of people are concerned about the APs. Um, we're working on that. You're still gonna get four credits for every AP that has a three or higher. And we're working on our IB policy if that got, because I know that got canceled this year. We wanna reward people who've been, who've been working very hard for their IBs. So just so you know that we're working on those. Um, if you want a full explanation of equivalencies, there is a link in here, and I know this will be, re this will be re posted somewhere so you can go back through and look at the links. Um, like I said, we'll give prior college credit to anything, any course that you have a C or higher for. Um, and the equivalencies, Molly and I work on your equivalencies as they come in. So as your transcripts come in, you'll see them reflected on your um, official transcript, and you'll be able to see your credit evaluations. Um, and just a quick orientation dates, maybe, <laughs> um, <laughs> just so you kind of have them for transfer students. We're talking about June 17th and June 26th for the School of Management. And the freshman dates right now are June 6th through 7th, 13th through 14th, and 23rd through 24th. And just so to relax you a little bit, we save seats for freshmen and transfers. So um, every, the seats that our students are about to register for, there are saved seats behind those, so, you don't, so those students don't necessarily see that. Just to make sure, guarantee that for each orientation, we have an equal number of seats for students coming in. Um, so you know, there's no rush that you have to be at that sixth to seventh date. Um, and if you can't make it to any of those dates, if you um, contact new student programs, there are um, secret dates at the beginning of the, the, the semester that you can also attend. So just work with new student programs if you can't attend any of those. Um, and then this is our contact information because I know we're going through these things fast and there's going to be lots of questions. Um, but we are working uh, right through this break from home, but um, we're here to answer questions and anything I glanced through or anything that I didn't cover, make sure that you contact us. And now, Janae. <laughs> yes. So, thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna, Katie, I'm gonna, uh, can you stop the share? Oh, yep, yeah, forgot that. Perfect, then it'll bring back everyone. So um, I'm thrilled to be able to introduce Dan Black, who is one of our alums. He is the global partner at ENY. And Dan, if you don't mind, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about yourself, what you um, majored at Binghamton, what your career pathway took you through, and where you're at now. So thank you. Take it away, Dan. <laughs> sure. Thank you, Janae. And hi, everyone. I am uh, just thrilled to be here. I got to put on my uh, my Binghamton gear, so that got, I got very excited to do that on a Friday. Um, my name is Dan Black, and I, I'm a proud, proud Binghamton graduate of 1994. I know it looks like, you know, much later than that, but, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm aging very well. Um, and uh, and I, I chose Binghamton among, a, 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 I had a, a couple of really good choices, as, as I'm sure many of you did, um, and we're right into business. I always knew I wanted to do something in, in management and business. Um, the School of Management, as it does today, offers so many, uh, a variety of choices, and that's one of the things that attracted me to the school. Um, I, I wound up um, majoring in accounting. Uh, I was between accounting and finance, took classes in both, um, and then when it came time to declare, I, uh, I went with accounting. I just felt more comfortable with it. Um, but that said, I did have enough room in my schedule. I had some APs, et cetera, so I did take some classes in accounting, um, some additional classes in, in, uh, in IT back in the day, knowing technology would be big. Um, and then when I graduated, started working at, at Ernst & Young, now EY, where I still am today, I mean, 26 years later. Um, I know that's unusual to be at one, one organization for so long, but the reason I've stayed at EY um, is because Binghamton uniquely prepared me for multiple careers um, without my even knowing it. So, so I'm a CPA, um, I've got my certification, but after working in audit at EY for a little while, I decided to make a change. And, and that's something that happens literally all the time. So I made a change into HR and recruitment um, in the late 1990s um, and have had, held a, a series of positions in human resources um, in different disciplines. But today I am uh, EY's global recruiting leader. So I am responsible for hiring every single person that joins the firm in every office everywhere around the world. Um, just to give you a sense of volume, that equates to about 100,000 hires per year. 
Um, of course, my favorite hires are the ones I get to do from Binghamton every single year. I'm still based in New York in Westchester County. Um, I go back to, to campus frequently, and, uh, and Binghamton is, is one of the largest sources. Uh, I think last year it was the largest source of hiring for our New York office, but one of the largest for EY period. Um, so we are right up there when you think about big powerhouse uh, schools of management and business across the country, across the world. Binghamton is in, in the top of that list for us and a lot of my counterparts in, in professional services. So that's great. Um, two last little fun facts about Binghamton. I did meet my wife there. Um, so we've been uh, together and married 21 years. She's actually in the upstairs office. I'm in the downstairs office. She's, uh, she's an attorney and, and uh, we, we have two wonderful children, one of whom has already said she's going to go to Binghamton. She's 12. I, you know. um, and then my nephew, so my, uh, my oldest nephew, my sister's oldest son, is a freshman this year, loving every minute of it. And, uh, and so there's a lot of Binghamton connections. So that's a little bit about me, Janae. I didn't want to go too long on that, but uh, I could talk about Binghamton forever. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So, Dan, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of how you felt that Binghamton prepared you for your career. Um, I know you did a little, touched a little bit in your introduction, mm -hmm. and I don't want to, um, but I think, you know, there's some things that you've done some very unique things at, at, with ENY and um, that, that career pathway. We'd love to hear a little bit more about how that preparation was. Yeah, yeah, there's a few things, and, and I specifically did not, you know, I, I, I had my, some of these questions I was thinking about in advance, but I wanted to come, you know, from the heart to, to, to these students, uh, because I really believe very, very heavily in, in Binghamton, the education you get there. And by the way, just as a side note, um, I do know what I'm talking about. I have visited, I, I, at last count, 275 other campuses all around the world. So if you ask me, have you been to Notre Dame? Have you been to USC? Have you been to University of Taiwan? Yes, 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 and then some. So I, I, I can see the difference in the education, the experience you're getting at, at an SOM at Binghamton and other schools as well. Um, what I felt uh, Binghamton did for me in spades, first and foremost, it, it, it opened my mind. Um, I was coming from Staten Island, New York, where I grew up. Um, I went to an all boys Catholic high school. I had no idea um, what the broader world was about until I got to Binghamton. Um, and that has only gotten better and better over the years, whether it's exposure to different, different clubs and students, international students, uh, the trips that they run, the travel, the exposure to people from different backgrounds, it was just phenomenal. And, and I can tell you within the first year or two of studying there, uh, my mind was open to lots of other possibilities. So that was a big one. Um, number two, and, and again, this only has gotten better since I've graduated, is, is exposure to opportunities. When I went to Binghamton, I thought, well, who knows business? I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe accounting, although that looks a little boring. I used to think that, right? Um, but but um, the university does just a wonderful job of exposing you to potential employers, as well as potential career paths. And so it wasn't until I was probably a sophomore or junior and my eyes were open to lots of different options I had never thought about. And, and that is a, a huge mission of the school. So, you know, of course, you're going to get a, a class A education, but you didn't get that exposure. And then last but not least, the network. I, I mean, I don't want to overstate this, but now that I'm a 25 year plus alumnus, I am still connected to literally hundreds of people that graduated from Binghamton. You know, we're all in the stage of our career where we have these, you know, uh, kind of bigger, more expansive jobs. So I'm in touch with CFOs and CEOs and Binghamton grads. And, and, and that network, if you need something, if you want to make a connection, if something comes into my LinkedIn that says I'm a Binghamton person, instantaneous. So having that network that now is, is worldwide and being able to tap into that as a young professional and even now as an old professional um, has just been phenomenal. I think Binghamton just did a great job of, of fostering that network early on. Great. So Dan, um, would you mind sharing, I know you said that there were so many hires um, that may possibly even the, the number one. Um, what makes Binghamton University graduates stand out so much to a company like ENY? So, so I, I think the way to describe it, you know, that is, is, you know, we just say, oh, well, you know, state school and, you know, you know students have grit. Not, absolutely. All true. Um, but the students that are coming up to Binghamton are really, really well prepared and smart. Um, I don't think I need to tell any of you uh, incoming students on the phone how, how hard it is to get into Binghamton. It's very competitive. So we know we're getting, you know, quote, quote unquote, a great product from, from the from a, a domain knowledge. You know, if you come out of Binghamton, you're a finance major, you're a marketing major, you're an accounting major, you know what you're talking about. And I can't think of one single person in my 20 years of recruiting at EY that came out of Binghamton and they said, well, you know, he or she is not cutting it from a, from a domain knowledge. So you are gonna know your stuff. 
Um, but beyond that, it's the other exposures that you get. So you, you know, I look at these wonderful um, students that are on this webcast today, and they are ambassadors, and they are tour guides, and they're in this club, and they all of those opportunities make you a well-rounded um, potential employee, and and that plays out. You know, uh, time and time again, we hire Binghamton grads that they come with the kind of that full package. They understand what hard work is. They understand, they know their academics, but they have this other side to them, this well-rounded side that is exactly what our clients are looking for. It's what we're looking for. It's the kind of people that you want to work with. Um, some of my very best friends that I've met at EY that from different classes at Binghamton have, uh, you know, have come because they're those kinds of people, the kind of people you want to be around. And that is, um, in addition to being a real joy, uh, that is good for business. So Dan, I know we have another question that I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I think sometimes you have that insight of what um, you wish you had done. Um, is there anything that you would say you would have wished you had done differently when your experience at Binghamton? You know, I, I thought about that one. I don't know about differently, but more of. So when I first joined um, Binghamton, in addition to um, you know joining, you know, being an SOM, I also I played soccer for the university for the first two years, and and that took up a lot of my time in a good way. You know, two a day practices and games and and traveling and the like. But at the end of the day, after I had an injury that that precluded me from playing the last two years. That's when I really dove in and I uh, got involved. I joined a fraternity. I joined a business fraternity. I joined a social fraternity. Um, I was involved a little bit in student government. I was in my resident hall. I was doing community service. And, and you know, it sounds so busy. Did on you top sleep? Of your, well, <laughs> yeah, I slept when I graduated. Um, but, but, but all of that stuff and the students, I can see you nodding your head. That's what makes for that Binghamton experience. So, so what I would have done differently is, is done more of that early on because I met, that's how I met so many people. That's how I, I rounded out. Out, you know, certainly my candidacy for getting hires, I wound up having three different offers for employment before I graduated. And, and, and let me just sh share one thing. I wasn't the very best student. Like I had a good GPA, but it wasn't like, you know, oh my God, over the top. But it's all these other experiences that make you very attractive to employers, regardless of your discipline. And so I would, my suggestion would be get involved early, you know, raise your hand, try something new and different. And, and um, I think it's going to really, you know, enhance your experience at Bing. So I know we have some other really great questions that are being asked. Um, and I, we have a student that's asking about what are the chances of being admitted into the PwC Scholars as a sophomore? Is, is, it, is it more difficult than being admitted as a freshman? And I know- Oh, I know. yeah, I actually did um, that. I actually uh, went into the Scholars my uh, end of freshman year, going into sophomore. And can you talk a little bit about the, what the application process was and how competitive it was? All right, so the PwC Scholars program in general is super competitive. Uh, you have to submit a pretty uh, intensive like resume uh, resume and application to the program and then there's a, a day of interviewing that you have to do you go through I probably went through eight interviews with people in the program um, and you have to keep you have to have a GPA at the time of, three, of a three seven and then when you actually get into the program you need to have you need to maintain a three six uh, so there's high expectations and standards in the program and it is really really competitive uh, so yeah definitely Thank you. Um, and I have another question for our panelists here. Um, can you go over what a MIS, a Management Information Systems Concentration, does and what kind of positions that they obtain? Yeah, so I'm Kurt. Uh, you want to take this one or are you? So I'm, also, I'm a finance and MIS uh, double concentration. So with MIS, it's Management Information Systems, it kind of covers everything tech related with business. So it, depending on what classes you take, you can kind of make it your own type of concentration. Like currently I'm taking two classes that are focused on code, but some of my other friends that are MIS majors, they're focused on web design, they're focused on more business analytics and platforms like Tableau or um, certain data visualization resources. So it really depends on what you want to make out of it. Career trajectory wise, you can go within tech, you can work with firms like Google, like Facebook more, or you can work into the, in the FinTech space as well. So it really is the best way to get exposure with it to data and into technologies in general um, within the School of Management, but it really is, what you make it depending on the class that you're taking. Thank you. Um, can, if someone could explain what the Zurich Trading Room is, I think that we have a student that's asking about that. 
Um, so the Zurich, was it Zurich Scholars or Zurich, Zurich Trading Room? So it's the Zurich Trading Room that I was, that I think that they're alluding to. Okay, so the Zurich Trading Room is basically um, a room that's filled with um, a bunch of computers and a lot of those computers have something called the Bloomberg Terminal on it, which is really great for accessing real um, real time data on just the S&P, NASDAQ, just any type of company or stock related information that you could think of. It's all there and it's like just a really convenient um, place for not only, well, mainly finance majors to meet and um, I'm part of the investment fund and we utilize that room a lot. Just it's a really great resource that everyone should take advantage of even if you're not a finance major. So I know that our, our time is ending here very shortly, but before we go, I do want to make sure um, a couple of things. We have an opportunity where people can join us in another room, but I also want to leave with some parting messages from both our students and our alum. If you wouldn't mind answering what your favorite thing about the School of Management was um, or is, uh, depending upon where you're at in your um, career. Um, so if you wouldn't mind sharing with the audience, and I think we'll start with, um, I'll put Dan on the spot here now, uh, <laughs> as, as far as what his favorite um, opportunities that he had at Binghamton. Uh, for me, it, it was the, the, the time with my professors. Um, they are, I mean, literally second to none. And in fact, my, the primary accounting professor, the one that I took for three separate classes, we're still in touch. We're still on Facebook together because we're old. That's what we do. We don't, we don't TikTok, right? So, um, and, and that access uh, to have one-on-one, -on -one, despite, you know, everyone thinks, oh, it's a big state school. That kind of personal um, you know, attention was absolutely phenomenal. Loved it. How about Amanda now? Sure. So for me, um, with regard to just extracurriculars, I think the investment fund has been really, really beneficial in just um, developing my professional skills, finance knowledge, um, modeling skills, and just has really prepared me to um, land like interviews. Right now I'm recruiting for finance internships. So that's that was really beneficial. And just the overall um, aspect of upperclassmen serving as really great mentors and resources. I never realized how welcoming they would be and how much they were willing to help me. So that's really beneficial for me. How about PG next? So for me, my favorite part about not only SOM, but things in general is that you're surrounded with like-minded peers that are super smart and have similar goals and aspirations to what you want. Uh, everyone here wants to be successful. And along with that, they also want you to be successful, which is the coolest part about the campus. I have a bunch of friends, if they get an internship, I'm not like, oh, I wish that I got that. I'm very excited because there's so many opportunities that one person getting an internship or a job doesn't take away from your opportunity. You're excited to see them be successful. So that part, definitely. How about, um, does Jaden want to go next? Sure. So I will echo something that Amanda said in a little bit more detail. My favorite part, both as an underclassman and an upperclassman, is by far the mentorship that happens within SOM. I think it's really special and something that you don't really see anywhere else. Uh, so as the internal vice president of the PDFC Scholars Program, part of my role was to oversee the mentor component this year for the freshman class in Management 111. So basically how that works is you, as your very first semester, you're assigned to an upperclassman who volunteers their time every single week to a group of four to six students and you just talk about resume critiques and mock interviews and when to schedule your classes, which professors to take, uh, any questions you have about their internships, their industries that they're interested in, how they came to find their majors. And obviously as a freshman, I looked up to these upperclassmen so much and I'm so grateful again at how welcoming they were and how they were just there for a resource for me from day one, I could ask them any single question I wanted. And it's really special too, to be an upperclassman and be able to give back to the freshman population. I have made some really great relationships with freshmen and sophomores already this year that I know we're gonna last a really long time. And not only is that a person, a friend for you in your time at Binghamton, but it's also a great resource for you once you're out in the working world as well. So the mentorship here is by far, I think one of the most valuable and special parts of SOM. Michaela, I know not, last but not least. <laughs> yeah, so this is my last semester here at Binghamton, even though it was cut short. Like, reflecting back on my time, I think generally just all the resources that are available to me, like Dan mentioned, when you graduate, you are definitely a very well-rounded student because you have so many different opportunities to engage 
in a variety of different areas, not only within your specific concentration, but also within marketing. So you can join a marketing case competition or join the marketing association for whatever fundraiser that they're doing, just to broaden your, your mindset and expose yourself to different educational opportunities. So I think SOM is very unique with that, uh, within the schools of Binghamton University, because you have just so many different resources available to you to expand beyond what your concentration is. Thank you so much. And I want to thank everyone that presented and spoke today and um, also for our audience. And I know that you have some big decisions making coming up and we do want to continue the conversation. If you'd like to join us in the chat room, we would love to speak with you there. Um, then you can, you can actually put your video on and be also <clears throat> um, at, able to ask any questions. I know that we heard a great deal about what the School of Management has to offer and I hope that you've learned a great deal more from this event and I hope to see you in the fall at Binghamton. Don't forget May 1 is still our deposit deadline so if you are interested in enrolling definitely encourage you to submit that deposit earlier the better um, but it's your choice and I um, we are here as a resource to answer any final questions that you may have as you're making those decisions. I wish you all the best and I hope to see you in the chat room. Thank you so much everyone. Have a good night.